Zadrizes bus darīs, kas tev. One of the most fun things to do while waiting for another season of House of the Dragon or in days of old Game of Thrones is, is figuring out what's going on with these leaks. The more images we get, the more pieces of the puzzle we're sort of able to figure out in this video, I'm continuing that process. I want to discuss what's going on with Rainier and all these scenes that she's supposedly filming, right? There are several scenes that have, have uh, things called ballistas, right? Which are known to kill dragons. So something's happening. And also I want to discuss this leaked image, uh, uh, this leaked image of Corliss Valaria. Please, before I jump into any of that, do me a massive favor. If you're enjoying my content, you like my stuff, please slap a like on this. Like goal's gonna be 420. And then also, make sure you subscribe. Please. That's one of the best things, if not the best thing, you can do for not just me here on YouTube, but anybody you're a fan of. Any content creator that you like and uh, you haven't pulled the trigger yet, go ahead and subscribe. But let's jump into it. Okay, so as of right now, one of the like only images we have of Rhaenyra is her standing out at the beach, right? They're using the same camera mount they used when they filmed scenes with Aemon claiming Vagar, so we can assume that Cyrex is behind her. Now, initially, the rumors that came out that surrounded this image was that Rhaenyra flies to Shipbreaker Bay to see the scene of what happens, right? Like, what happened at the end of House of the Dragon Season 1, where her son, uh, Lucerus, was killed horribly by Aemon and Vagar. Right? Now, there's even people that went as far as saying she sees pieces of him wash up on shore. It's possible. That would be extremely brutal. This does not happen in canon, right? So, if they're going to break from canon and add things that didn't happen in this story, they have to, like, sort of enhance it and make it worthwhile because book fanatics like myself, when we're watching this show, we're going to be looking at every single scene and comparing it with our own uh, recollections of the book, right? Like, we've all read Fire of Blood. We want to see how this scene was transposed uh, in writing and then how it's made it to the screen. So, with that being said, right, there's actually a few different rumors that are surrounding this image of Rainier. And it's actually going to go along with a few other ones that are going to be coming out over the next week or so while they're filming this series, right? So, one idea um, is that she goes to uh, Shipbreaker Bay to mourn Luke, right? But another one is that she actually flies to Rook's Rest, right? After the Battle of, Ro or sorry, before the Battle of Rook's Rest happens and she rallies her troops. She Remember what Daenerys did in Game of Thrones season seven when she's like letting everybody know after the Field of Fire and they like all bent the knee. She's like, yo, fire and blood is coming. Y'all better bend the knee if you know what's good for you, right? So that uh, scene supposedly um, happens where Rhaenyra will fly uh, to Rook's Rest with Rhaenys, gives the speech, and then departs, and Corlys is actually at Rook's Rest too with some of his troops, right? That's another idea that was sent to me through the DMs over on Twitter. Speaking of which, please go follow me. I, uh, my username over there is Sir underscore Hunts, but also I've changed it to uh, Mr. Westeros. For a long time I was Dragon Daddy, but it's Mr. Westeros. That's actually the name of my second channel here on YouTube. Okay, another idea of what Rainier is actually doing in these scenes, and this one's a bit crazier, and I'm not that big of a fan of it. Although, I mean, let's be honest, I t it's kind of hard to <laughs> uh, disappoint me with scenes like this. But another person says that Rainier does fly to Shipbreaker Bay. She does look for Luke's body, right, and pieces of Arax. She mourns, and then she immediately flies to Storm's End and starts laying assault on the castle. <laughs> uh... I uh, question this person, and I'm like, dude, that would be something that would not just break canon, but it actually breaks an insane storyline set up in this series with Boros later on in the series. Um, so that's nonsense. I don't believe that. Let me know how much you disagree with it down below in the comment section, just like myself. Um, and this this third one, I have one more thing that she could be doing after I announce this third one. But this third one, I think, is... Is, uh, is kind of interesting, to say the least, right? It's the most interesting, I think. Um, not my favorite, just the most interesting. This this person says that Rhaenyra actually flies to King's Landing, not Shipwrecker Bay or Rook's Rest, but King's Landing, right? And secretly meets with Alicent, 
using the same tunnels that Damon taught her in House of the Dragon Season 1. So the tunnels that were built beneath Megor's Holdfast in order for him or anybody else who's, you know, in power at the castle to escape if the castle's being laid siege to. Remember, Rhaenyra sneaks out into the city. We had that famous famous scene of her almost sticking up with Damon, right? And then we also had that blind fire witch who said, would you like to see your fortune? And then right after that cuts to a massive ball of fire telling Rhaenyra that she's going to be eaten by a dragon, right? That early on in the show. Remember that? This person says that Rhaenyra basically sneaks into the Red Keep that way and has a conversation with Alicent. And it's like their last showdown or face-off rather before like, uh, you know, the next time they meet, Rhaenyra will be taking King's Landing. Now, like I said, that's it's the most interesting, not my favorite. I don't think that's what's actually happening. Um, the fourth one, I think, is my favorite, although not necessarily the most interesting. This person says that all of these scenes that are being filmed with Rainier outdoors, right, including the one with Rainier looking out into the ocean, are just different shots of Rainier taking King's Landing. Now, the reason why it's my favorite is because I feel like that's the most realistic thing. Like... I explained this in a video that I released not too long ago, but it's actually not that big of a deal to move the, you know, the battle that is uh, the gullet, right, which is the bloodiest battle, one of the bloodiest of the dance in the bloodiest naval battle in Westerosi history, right, it's at least top three, um, that, right, is... It, it doesn't actually matter if she takes King's Landing first. A lot of people are saying, no, it does, because when Jace dies in the Battle of the Gullet, that's what gives her the motivation to want to take King's Landing, right? But you got to realize, Rhaenyra has literally already lost her father, Visenya, and Lucerys. If she needs the death of one more son to motivate her to do something, well, then that's kind of, that's kind of not, <laughs> it's just, ah, uh, ah, uh, I don't think that that's, it matters all that much, right? In my opinion, it actually will make for better storytelling for TV world, right? So George was kind of chronicling the events of the dance in Fire and Blood. He just says this happened, then this happened, then that happened, then this happened, then this might have happened, right? But on the TV show, you kind of have to have it more cinematic. So what they could do is, like I said, have her take King's Landing in season two, right? At the end of it, obviously. And then at the beginning of season three, you open up with the Battle of the Gullet for like two episodes. So she, she gets a little bit of peace at the end of season two. The average show watcher thinks she won, ultimately, she just has to protect the throne, but then the Battle of the Gullet happens and she loses one more person, the, you know, like one of the last people that matters to her, so it's it's just like, that's how that's just really tragic. Let me know what you all think about these four different things that Rainier is doing down below in the comment section. Just to reiterate, one person says she's flying to Rook's Rest to give a... Uh, speech to her troops right before the battle, and then she flies off. One person says she's flying to Sh Shipbreaker Bay... But then also is, uh, but then turns around and lays, like, storms in on fire. Lays it, raises it to the ground, rather. Um, one person says she flies to King's Landing to secretly meet with Alicent. Uh, and then the last person said that all of these scenes are Rhaenyra taking King's Landing. They're just filming different scenes. So there's going to be different moments in the battle. And that's what all these things that they're planning to build sets for and all that stuff that they're filming right now. Um, and then also the original rumor was that Rhaenyra just goes to Shipbreaker Bay to mourn the loss of her son Lucerys. And remember, most of these things do not happen in canon. Rhaenyra is pretty much on Dragonstone until she, until she takes King's Landing after the Battle of the Gullet in canon. Okay, so now, since we're making really good time, before I talk about the last uh, leaks for this video, I want to discuss this theory that I've been sort of brainstorming over the past couple of days. Initially, I mentioned it in a live stream that I did. Uh, that was four hours long. It was from several months ago, but it was mostly focusing on Targaryens, right? I was brainstorming ways that they could change this story for the better, right? Ultimately remain in canon and just show that uh, it's possible to make an adaptation slightly better than the books while still sticking within the same theme and the same canon of it, right? So in that process, uh, you come up with one of the biggest things that happens, and that's Rhaenyra's death. She's fed to Sunfire. So after she takes King's Landing, she loses it, right? She's forced to sell her crown to buy passage back to Dragonstone. Now, that line right there, sell her crown, sell her father's crown. So her father's crown, right, is the crown of Jaehaerys. The crown of Jaehaerys in the books 
in my opinion, the show kind of botched that. The show crown looks like it looks it looks cool, right? It fits in with the theme of the King's Guard armor, but in the books, it's actually this just golden crown with like all these different colored stones on it that represent the different colors of the faith. So they kind of did that for the TV show, except for they did different sigils from all the great houses of Westeros, right? My opinion, the rainbow crown from the books, it just it. it fits the themes of the books and it's just it's just a better depiction of it right but anyway she has to sell that to buy a ship to go just right across blackwater bay right to to, to dragonstone it is really close so you're telling me that all of these people that are in the shipyard she only found one that would be able to take her back to dragonstone by paying for the passage with her own crown that was her father's crown. That was Jaehaerys' crown. My opinion, no, that's nonsense. It doesn't make sense. Obviously, that's what George wrote, so that's what happened. I feel like that crown paid for a little bit more, right? It paid for faceless men to go and kill Aegon. And it just so happened that Rhaenyra died before that could, you know, go about. But ultimately, it did, right? So Rhaenyra's death, Rhaenyra's crown, used to pay for faceless men to kill Aegon. Now, the, there's one thing you got to know about the Faceless Men. The Faceless Men charge an insane amount of money for their services. It's not just like a, a set number where anybody who wants to hire them has to pay the same amount of gold or whatever. No, they want their payment to physically and mentally cripple you. They want to take, say, for instance, half of your wealth, right? They know that that will be a great toll to pay. And if you want their services, you have to be willing to make that sacrifice. Because they know that when they, when they take someone's name down, that person's going to die. So they want you to make sure that you're able to take on that, right? Um, here's the thing. Rhaenyra didn't use her crown in the value, right? She didn't, she didn't say, hey, this is a piece of gold. This is really sentimental to me. Please, faceless man, come kill my brother. No she willingly sacrificed her life in her throne, right? Like, she may not have knowingly sacrificed her life, but the Faceless Men knew what was going on at Dragonstone. They knew she was going to be eaten. So, even though Rhaenyra thinks, and this is just my theory, right? It's just, I, I, in short, I think Rhaenyra hired Faceless Men to go and kill Aegon, the, her brother, right? And it didn't happen until after she died, because the way Aegon II dies is poison in the wine, right? And uh, Faceless Men can take on the face of anybody. So Corliss and Laris are the ones that are given the wine to King Aegon II that kills him, but ultimately a Faceless Man could have been the one to actually do it, right? But anyway, getting back on track here, it just makes sense that Rhaenyra, it's symbolic. She gave up her crown. She gave up any claim she had to the Iron Throne in order for Aegon II to die, right? So just because she gave up her own claim doesn't mean that Aegon wouldn't be her successor, and that's ultimately what happens. Um, I feel like it's really poetic. I feel like that's the only way the Faceless Men would do something like that is if she willingly gave up her power, right? Her her throne. That's, that's the big sacrifice. Because any amount of gold that they would have charged her to do something like this wouldn't have been enough. It wouldn't have been enough of a payment, so to speak, for her because of who she is. And also, when you go back to the actual origins of how the Faceless Men were started, well, it's literally because of the doom of the Valyrians. The Valyrians, in their minds, would torture slaves to the point where they would rather die than continue working because working conditions were so horrible. They were slaves in these twisting and turning caverns that they had to mine Valyrian gold for, right? The Faceless Men were born out of that, and that the first Faceless Men was this dude who went around to all the Valyrian slaves and gave them the gift of death. So, of course, Faceless Men probably have something to do with several different eras of Targaryen downfalls, ultimately leading to what happens with Robert's Rebellion. Here's just a random little fact, um, completely, kind of completely unrelated. If you ever wonder why uh, the Valyrians never full-on conquered Westeros, even though Valyrian's whole thing was getting gold, right, and, and power and slaves, uh, is because, according to an old piece of, piece of transcript from Valyrian history, is the Valyrians actually did try to conquer Westeros. They made it as far as Old Town, but ultimately lost uh, some massive battle that sent them fleeing, right? And then you may think, well, why don't, wouldn't they just plunder Westeros? Because Casterly Rock has a bunch of gold. Well, apparently Valyrians uh, and their sorcerers um, had a dream that the doom of 
Valyria, the Doom of the Dragons, would come from Casterly Rock's gold. Which is really interesting, because ultimately Casterly Rock's gold, Tywin Lannister's gold, is what won Robert the Iron Throne and brought about the downfall of House Targaryen. You really gotta read World of Ice and Fire, it's an awesome book. Okay, so the last little thing I want to mention, the last leaked, is the leaked image of Corlys in armor. Looks awesome. His wig looks uh, way better this season. I know this is not how we're going to be seeing it on screen, but it just looks like neater. Looks like it fits his head better. Looks like they took more time to make it. It just, it, it looks awesome. Um, but uh, this leaked image of Corliss in armor proves that some sort of battle is going to be happening. Uh, I was sent, uh, you know, leaked information saying that Rhaenyra goes to... Uh, <clears throat> give the rallying speech to Rook's Rest, remember I mentioned that at the beginning of this video, and supposedly uh, Corliss goes with him, well apparently uh, this person says that c this could also be for when Rainier takes King's Landing and Corliss is, you know, uh, in his blockade of ships holding it down, and one of the last scenes of the season is actually the Triarchy, who are, remember those enemies that Damon made down in the Stepstones with Corliss, the Triarchy is actually hired Right? By King Aegon II and the Greens to fight uh, Rhaenyra's hold on the gullet, aka Corlys's hold on the gullet. So that's probably, or that could be what's happening in these scenes. But I'm going to go ahead and get the heck out of here. This seems like a good point. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching this far. Please, if you enjoyed this video, slap a like on it. Like goal is going to be 420. And also, please subscribe. I don't know.